my speaker. Good afternoon. Welcome to the February 12th meeting of the Metropolitan Nashville Traffic and Parking Commission. If you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery Court or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal counsel to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. To uh, ask for an approval of today's agenda, do I have a motion? So moved. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 The, the agenda for today's meeting has been approved. Ask for approval of the minutes of the January 8th, 2018 meeting of the Traffic and Parking Commission. Is there so a moved. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. They've been approved. Approval of the consent agenda. <laughs> Please note that items on the consent agenda will be voted on on a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate those items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Consent agenda 0218, resolution, mandatory referrals. Proposal 2018M 003AB001, a request for the abandonment of alley number 1189 and alley 1205, alley number 1189 from Clifton Avenue, northeastward to <coughs> Michigan Avenue, alley number 1205 from alley number 1189, southeastward to its terminus. See the map for details. Easements are to be retained, requested by Jonathan Kingham, applicant. Parking resolutions. Authorized 30-foot loading zone from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the east side of 3rd Avenue South, 67 feet south of Lee Street, in front of 615 3rd Avenue South, requested by Barge Design Solutions. Authorize a 50-foot valet zone at 2304th Avenue North, 24 hours, seven days a week, requested by Parking Management Company. Item D, authorize 50-foot loading zone from 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. on the west side of Magazine Street and 20 feet north of Division Street, requested by Market Street Enterprise. Item E, authorized loading zone on the south side of the Mumbrian Street from 1st Avenue South to 2nd Avenue South, requested by Metro Public Works. Item F, authorize a valet zone lane increase from two spaces to four spaces at 217 Louise Avenue, Jimmy Kelly Steakhouse, requested by Parking Management Company. Item G, authorize residential permit parking 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. on 45th Avenue North from Nebraska Avenue to Utah Avenue, requested by Council Member Kathleen Murphy. Item H, authorized parking meter removal at Reed Hurst Avenue at 25th Avenue North, requested by Metro Public Works. Traffic regulations, item I, authorized always stop control at Colmont Drive and Kelly Drive, requested by Council Member Potts. Item J, authorized always stop at 16th Avenue North and Herman Street, requested by Council Member O'Connell. That is the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Yes, Ms. Wood. I have a question about item E. E? Chip, what's your question, Ms. Williams, please? Uh, about the wits there and how that's going to work, because that's, isn't that right there? Before you get to, to Second Avenue, you've got valet parking, and then how do the lanes go there? Because I'm trying to remember that from between second to first. The valet parking at this location is at Third Avenue. This loading zone is to Mumbrian first to second right. to service the new business that is located there. 
How Will I that think take up the lane there, or is there parking there? I can't remember how. That it's happens. offset. Just it's the double yellow is offset to the so this parking will not be in the travel lane. Okay. Okay. All right. You, you satisfied? Okay. Yes. Ms. Kern, did you have a question? Um, yes, I had a question about um, parking regulation B. Um, I think I had emailed you about this, Chip, but my understanding is this is in conflict with the planned bikeway um, in the walk and bike plan on 3rd Avenue. Do we know if that if there's going to be a conflict or? Well, we looked at the bike plan, and you're correct. It does call for a future bike lane. So the decision is, do we go ahead and put this in for the business and then we adjust it should that day come or when that day comes? But right now it is in the walk bike plan to have a bike lane there or bike facility of some kind. So yes, but th there's also a lot of conflicts already existing out there if we were to put a bike lane. We'd have to remove a lot of loading zones and stuff. So what we were thinking is go ahead and put this in and revisit it when that day comes. So we would have to revoke it potentially within a year or two? Yeah. Um, uh, Chip, are you indicating that there's other conflicts like this around town? I mean, well, I any, any any time you go, to, you put in bike lanes, you you exclude parking. So yeah, when if we were to put bike lanes throughout downtown, we'd visit a lot of locations where you have loading zones and valet zones. Does it make more problems for us to go ahead if we if we think there's a likely bike lane in the near future to be adding more places? We're just going to go back and take them out, does it? I'm, I'm leaning more towards let's get a year's use of the loading zone or whatever it ends up being, whether it's six months or a year and a half, get the loading zone in, they use it for a year, and then we might, they may have a different way of loading by then or we can find a place around the corner, but I'd rather get 12 to 16, 18 months of use for the loading zone than not have it in anticipation of something that may or may not come within the next time period. It's just my thinking. I guess my concern is that it's always harder to take away parking than it is, so, you know. So I think it's just making the bike lane harder down the road because we're now having to take away something which we knew we would have to take away. That's know, a good point six too. Six months earlier. <laughs> so um, I think I'd like to pull that one off the okay. consent agenda. So that is item refreshment. Uh, B. B. Okay. All right. Let, All right. So you would, Chair? Can we ask if someone from Barge is here? Okay. So if we well, get to that, when we get to that, we can. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. So, um, Ms. Kern, would you like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda? Uh, absent item B, please. I, I've got one question. Okay, yes. One question. Uh, item C, uh, authorized 50-foot valet zone at 234th Avenue North, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Fourth Avenue is one of the main thoroughfares. Um, are we sure we want to do that during rush hour traffic, peak traffic times? Is that going to be, uh, is that valet offset? We already have two valets that the commission has approved at this location, and this is one more that we will add there at that location. Uh, officer, would you have any further? Now, if they've got two that are they're already existing, is it just gonna extend it? That will be an extension of the current two once construction is finished at all three of these locations. It will be in consecutive three valet zones. Does it, does it take a lane of traffic? It does not take a lane of traffic because in the past this was a parking lane. Gotcha. Okay. Are you satisfied, officer? Yes, sir. Hot. Right. 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 Yes, One yes, more Ms. thing Martin. on item G, we need to request to have that removed and defer for one month. Okay. So, uh, Ms. Kern, could I ask you to make a motion to read? Uh, sure to modify our agenda per your request and the one Ms. Marshall just made, please. So I make a motion to approve the agenda, but um, moving item B to off the consent agenda and then a one month deferral for item G. Okay. Is that Did we make that motion correctly, legal counsel? Um, I think if you, you would remove Separately. both of them from the okay. consent agenda and then um, Okay. We'll make a separate motion for each of them. Okay. First, I'll make a motion to remove items B and G from okay. the consent All right. agenda. So we have a first and a se uh, first. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. All in favor of removing those two items? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's approved. Okay. Do I have a motion to, to approve the modified consent agenda, please? Uh, so moved. Okay, we have a first. Second. Is there a second? We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. 
All right. Okay. I think we need a motion to defer item G for one month, please. Uh, make a motion to defer item G one month. Okay. Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have now moved item C, C no, B, B, off the consent agenda. Let me get clear. All right. Is someone from Barge here to speak to that, please? Okay. Please step forward and state your name and address. And this affects you, Mr. Matthews? It does. It's okay. our building. All right. Uh, my name is Jeff Cundiff. I'm with Barge Design Solutions. And I'm Bert Matthews with uh, Matthews Company, the developer of 6153rd. Uh, there was there was some discussion about the the walk and bike plan, and that was one thing that we considered early on when thinking about uh, you know potentially providing loading and or parking up and down Third Avenue in front of our building. And currently, as today, there's there's parking all the way up and down Third Avenue on that side. Um, so we went and we consulted with the walk bike plan, and there's a planned bike route for second and fourth, but none for third based upon what I understand and what we've seen, and I've, I've brought some of those exhibits here with me, so I'm not sure where um, there's a conflict there, but I think we're trying to design around that, and we're trying to provide a convenient location for loading in and out of the building. I mean, it's getting utilized that way today, um, so we're just trying to make it safer for everybody. And I think for us, understanding that if there is gonna be a bike lane coming in the future, that being able to have it, even if it's just for six months, a year, 18 months, would be very helpful for the building. Um, so. Chip, can you address the plans for Third Avenue? There well, seems to be I some. Don't, I don't have the, you probably memorized it a lot more than anybody in here, Nora, but I don't, I don't know if it's a bike lane or bike facility on Third. Like. I was just alerted by Metro Planning that they had had a plan for third, um, and wanted to just make sure we're being thinking forward about plans for that. And so, if, if there's a way to work, I mean, with that, so that when it, it comes along, that we can make sure that everyone's accommodated. Yeah, our intent um, is to be a bike-friendly business. I mean, we're we're <laughs> we're on your side with regards to that. So, and in fact, we have you know. showers in the building. We have a bike rack in the building. We've got those things to. Yeah try to accommodate, so right. we're trying and to make the building work that way also. It appears that they've expressed willingness to work okay. in, with us in the future. Did you talk to planning about this one, or did we? We have discussed this with planning. Uh, Mr. Jeff Hammond's with us. If you would like to discuss it with him, he's our traffic engineer here at Public Works. Mr. Hammond, do you have anything to add to our discussion here before we conclude? This this is a bike uh, facility that is planned in the future on third. I think some of the some of the earlier sketches do show up on second and fourth, and it remains second and fourth as you get into downtown in the area of this building. It is it is currently shown on third, but we have no timetable for that. We we have worked with. Uh, Mr. Bird, Mr. Briggs with the planning uh, department and do that regularly. We know it is on our horizon. We think it's probably in the in the relatively near future in that one year to 18 month uh, time frame that has been discussed here. Uh, but but as was mentioned, we do have this parking here now, and we have a number of projects uh, all over the county that uh, you know will be moving into that. And, and we would not recommend making um, uh, design decisions now on, on projects that may be coming in the future. We we are comfortable that we can work with this this loading zone in particular, uh, if and when that time comes to facilitate the bike uh, lane. Ms. Kern, you have a question? Okay, yeah, I think that, that clarifies my question. Okay. So then I'm fine moving forward with All right, so would you like to make a motion? Sure, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve item B. Okay. Second. First, is there a second? Second. All right, we have first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, the next item is new business item, appeal denial of always stop control on Horton Avenue and 15th Avenue South requested by Council Member Sledge. I know Council Member Sledge is here. Chip, do you, any comments about this? After, I've, I've talked to the councilman about this intersection and I've, I've re-looked at the data and actually we went and got new traffic counts and I'm, I'd like to pull this off of an appeal and make it a recommended always stop from staff. Okay. Okay. So I just didn't have time to put it back on consent agenda. I didn't want to revise the agenda officially, right. but we're recommending installation. All right. Is, can, may I get a motion? Is there any other comments from any other members, or can we get a motion to approve the staff recommendation? Make a motion to approve. Okay. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor of it would be approving the installation of an all-way stop. Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Do you want to speak at all? No, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. The motion's been approved. Council member, thank you for coming. Okay. All right. We're going to go to uh, item number five appeal denial of always stop control at Darden Place and Huckleberry Drive, requested by Council member Mina Johnson, who's present. Okay. Chip, do you? Thing to add, or should we bring? Well, this very, I don't know if Corby, you got any kind of graphics. Yeah, very low volume. That, those are your daily counts in front of you there. So very low volume, limited sight distance. And so when we have super low volume and limited sight distance, we prefer to address it with a crossroad warning sign. Um, at the same time, go back one slide, Corby. Uh, you remember that? lesson we had when we look for even distribution of volume and we're looking for 50 50 or 60 40 splits well this falls into that okay so so if you're looking for that kind of technical stuff the volumes here meet this criteria of balance for an always stop um, it does have a sight distance issue they do have pedestrians in the area not a big argument for not putting it in if you know what i mean it's okay it's not that big of an issue if you guys were to vote to put it in. You might want to hear the testimony of the council yes. member and all that. Yes, council member Johnson, please come forward. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you for having me. I'm Mina Johnson, uh, representing District 23. I understand this area uh, with a low traffic volume and typically, you know, four way stop is uh, not uh, uh, standard for that kind of uh, intersection. However, uh, that particular intersection is very uh, unique in the topography. And in the prior to this meeting, I asked Ms. Jackie to provide you uh, several pictures. And I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at it. Uh, the first picture uh, you may show, yes, this one. This shows uh, just typical uh, two-way stop picture. Uh, this is approaching a uh, Darden uh, towards northbound. Uh, the left right shows Huckleberry. And this one I took uh, from my car. So it, I'm stopping at the line. And if you take a look, you see the big, beautiful tree. So that is, you know, we love trees, and we don't want to cut it, but that's the reality. If you stop at the line, what you see is a big tree. You cannot see anything. And if you go to the next picture, so that's if you go a little forward and look Huckleberry East side. So you can see uh, the street kind of curve towards Darden. So that will make the street almost look like wider. So to make the strip further back. So this is the intersection of uh, Huckleberry and Darden. And the next one, uh, maybe not. So anyway, so if you go, uh, towards one street left, it will be Huckleberry and Green, Green, Greenlee. Mm -hmm. So that one is actually four-way stop. So that one has unique uh, topography because it's uh, sloped. And the corner of Huckleberry and Darden, if you especially uh, go towards 
west side to your left, uh, one blocked by the tree, and two, if you go a little bit inched in and inched in, you still see the slope. So actually, it, it's so hard to see car coming. And not only that, if you are driving on Huckleberry from west to east uh, towards town, uh, they from uh, after passing the Greenlee, you tend to kind of speed up. So if there is no stop sign, they kind of go over Darden in a really nice speed. And especially, you know, that area is a walkable area and people tend to walk with babies and dogs. So by the time car realized pedestrian is crossing Huckleberry over Darden, sometimes it's too late. So actually, there was a couple of niamis at the corner, and I do have a neighbor uh, coming behind me, and if you'd like to hear a neighbor's testimony how uh, dangerous that intersection is. So for that reason, I am asking to reconsider. I mean, if uh, this is the intersection of Brook Hollow with Georgetown and Brook Hollow with uh, style it, uh, this type of intersection with one street is clearly a collector street, and the another uh, side of cross street is a neighborhood street. I will not ask to reconsider. But this, you know, intersection, Huckleberry, is uh, running between uh, Hickory Valley and uh, Richfield. And another one, Darden, is also running uh, Hickory uh, Hickory Valley to Summary. Both are neighborhood street. So for that reason, naturally, traffic volumes are both low volume. But because of limited, very limited site, and because of unique topography, for the safety, I would like you to ask, reconsider, and install the four-way stop. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you. All right. Commissioners, does anybody want to have any other comments or should we proceed with a motion? Yes, yes, Council Member Hay. Good in a minute. Do we have a count on how many accidents there have been at this particular intersection? The documentation shows one in the past two years. <clears throat> okay. And, um, okay, that's all I need to know. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we grant the appeal for the stop sign in. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We, we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? This has been approved. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Thank you, Commissioner. I it. All right, you're welcome. All right. Um, I think what we're going to do next is uh, move to our other item on the agenda since Council Member Roberts is here. Uh, Update on the 51st Avenue between Delaware Avenue and Centennial <coughs> Boulevard truck restriction. Okay. So I, I don't know if you guys had a chance to check your email today, but I sent a I document did. around. It's, um, it's from the Federal Highway Administration. Long story short, there was a question on whether this body has the authority to implement a truck restriction in the vicinity of a highway system, the interstate system. And so TDOT investigated and sent a letter out, and, and I did send you a copy, but if you hadn't had time to read it, basically says we should reconsider our vote, implement the truck restriction based on access to the interstate. And Metro Legal can update us on the, the technical and the legal parts of it, but that's it in short and sweet. All right, legal counsel, can you provide us an update, please, on this matter? Sure. So what Chip said is basically accurate. I can just fill in maybe a little more detail. Um, but um, Federal Highway Administration requested the Tennessee Department of Transportation to look into the question of whether um, this commission's action in restricting truck traffic on 51st Avenue North um, violated um, some um, Federal Highway Act regulations um, codified at 23 CFR 658.19. Um, and TDOT did take a look at that and did an analysis of it. They worked with our office. They got full transcripts of, um, I believe, both of the hearings that um, this body heard on, on that issue um, at two different meetings. Um, uh, and in particular, um, they asked for a copy um, of the RPM study um, as well. 
And they um, uh, concluded, um, unfortunately, that um, 23 CFR 658.19 was violated. They looked at two provisions of it, um, subsection D and subsection A. Um, subsection D, um, they concluded was not violated because that has to say, no state may enact or enforce any law denying access within one road mile from the national, national network using the most reasonable and practicable route available except for spe specific safety reasons on individual routes. So basically they said that was more than one road mile, um, the distance in question. So that one wasn't applicable, but they looked at 23 CFR 658.19a, which provides more generally, no state may enact or enforce any law denying reasonable access to vehicles with dimensions authorized by the Surface Transportation Assistance Act between the national network and terminals and facilities for food, fuel, repairs, and rest. In addition, no state may enact or enforce any law denying um, reasonable access between the nation, national network and points of loading and unloading to household, good, household goods carriers, motor carriers of passengers, and any truck, tractor, semi-trailer um, combination, and then it gives certain dimensions. Um, so, um, uh, uh, Commissioner Schroer with TDOT concluded um, that A was violated um, because it, um, it does not allow us to limit reasonable access um, uh, between the national network and terminals, facilities for food, fuel, repair, arrest, and points of loading and unloading household goods. Um, and they also looked at um, uh, some paragraph I-2 and said, um, based on that language, that um, Nashville must have an access review process providing, among other things, that the denial of requested access to terminals and services may be made only on the basis of a safety and engineering analysis of the proposed access route. So even though the commission did have a great deal of anecdotal testimony from, from witnesses, um, if you'll recall, the RPM study um, actually recommended that truck um, trucks not be restricted on 51st Avenue. So because of the, um, the lack of a safety and engineering analysis, um, the conclusion was um, that we should indeed reconsider the action um, to um, uh, grant the truck access restriction on 51st Avenue. It seems to take what a safety study could be made um, I do think that would be possible. Um, I, I don't know, it should maybe be able to speak to the, what would I, be the likely engineering conclusion of such a study. Um, it, it might also be possible to, to do such a study um, with kind of a larger scope to see if there are any other actions that could be taken um, in terms of increasing pedestrian safety on 51st, even if the trucks were to remain. Okay. Chip, can, can you speak Very to well the said. safety? I, I think, I think at a minimum we need to, our due dil diligence would be to follow up on the statement saying unless there's a safety concern, we need to rescind this vote. So we need to pr see if there is a safety concern and I think that would require a study of some kind similar to the truck routing study we did the first time, put a little more safety emphasis on it and, and maybe it grows into, okay, so with it, if this doesn't pass in the future, what else can we do? I mean, I think such a study could take into consideration all of the testimony that was offered um, at the preceding hearings on this matter. Um, but um, ultimately, I think TDOT is giving us pretty narrow parameters um, for um, a conclusion uh, um, that, that we would have to do anything other than reconsider the commission's prior action. So, you know, in, with respect to the commissioner and TDOT and Federal Highway, we, we'd, like to, we'd like to follow their lead, kind of. You know, they come up with this letter saying, we're, we're not sure you should have passed that. In addition to that, we are jeopardizing federal money if we don't take some form of action after getting this kind of summary. All right. Yeah, that's correct. So our, our recommendation is that you do in fact reconsider okay. your prior action. Thank you. Any other commissioners have any questions, concerns, comments? I guess so you're saying we do need to make take an action to reverse our decision or is that basically it? Um, that would be my recommendation, yes. 
So there's no way around this without jeopardizing funds? I mean, I'm not sure how long they will give us to make that decision. Um, this um, letter was actually dated December 20th. We weren't able to present it at the January meeting because by the time we got it with the Christmas holidays, the January 8th meeting agenda had already closed. Um, so we've already kind of been sitting on it for not quite two months. Um. Councilmember Roberts is here, and I know there's some people here who are have a different perspective. I think it might be helpful. Would it be helpful today, Council, if we heard from a person from kind of each side? Sure. Okay. So, Councilmember Roberts, I know you have concerns about this. Have you, do you have any comments to make today, or? Okay. Turn your mic on, please. Okay. District 20, and I'm here on round three to discuss 51st Avenue. I appreciate what you all have done thus far, and I know this has not been an easy ride. It's kind of Groundhog's Day. It feels like every time I think it's done, it comes back up. But, um, you know, the masses came with me last time and talked about the safety issues that we have. We have children crossing the streets. We have, you know, tankers filled with oil going exceedingly fast down 51st Avenue. We have huge, huge concerns about safety. And I think when we looked at this last, I don't think we were looking at 51st Avenue as the complete street that it is today. I think the last studies that have been done on this, we were looking at 51st before the whole complete street was finished. This is a huge safety issue. And no matter how deep the pockets of big oil they go with these lawyers, this is always going to be something that is going to, it's, it's about safety or about money. And I can't, I'm imploring you to look at this from the viewpoint of people with children and babies that are growing in this neighborhood. 6,000 new houses have been built. This is not the neighborhood it was. This is a completely different street. Please look at this from a safety point of view. And yes, I am asking if we could do a safety study. And I don't know what all that entails, but I'm happy to, 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 to do whatever it takes to, to, to get us to that point. Thank you, Council Member Roberts. Um, I know some folks are here. Mr. Lee, are you going to represent, I guess it's been described as big oil. <laughs> <laughs> There really is no such thing as little oil, I guess, is there? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Tom Lee, and I'm pleased to represent Marathon Petroleum uh, before you today. Uh, we think the uh, commissioner of the Department of Transportation has it right, and, and I think uh, this uh, commission may well remember uh, there were two hearings uh, on this matter, one in June of last year and then a second one in August. Uh, the August hearing occurred after, uh, or at least while, the Complete Street project was, was being done and, and, and put into motion. And I think uh, uh, your consultant from RPM indicated that they did consider uh, the Complete Street project in evaluating whether uh, 51st Avenue uh, remained appropriate uh, for truck traffic pursuant to both the city streets plan uh, and also its, its, its purpose. Um, the letter from the commissioner uh, to the FHWA uh, states that the specific safety reasons contemplated in the federal regulation are conditions that impact the safe operation of the motor vehicle. And that's because the federal law, uh, the Surface Transportation Act, is, is a law passed by Congress to make sure that uh, motor vehicles can operate safely and efficiently on the national network of highways. Uh, that's, that's really all we would, would have to say. We, we accept that the commissioner's letter uh, does note in, in mentioning uh, the safety study that um, uh, another study, and, and by the way, we are happy to participate, as we have always said, with this commission and staff and members of the community in arriving at a number of solutions, but, but uh, the metropolitan government has already retained and conducted one study um, and as Mr. Knopf rightly uh, r recognized, that study came to 
a recommendation that the truck restriction not go into place. What we would hope we can do, uh, if this commission acts today to uh, uh, reconsider its action, is to engage in a conversation that includes uh, the neighborhood and the public works department and the businesses in the area. There are some real issues, uh, and I think uh, the council member would, uh, would agree. There are issues uh, in this area with pedestrian traffic. There are issues in this area with street parking. Uh, uh, since uh, uh, the neighborhood has changed in character, she's right about that. Um, there are now multiple businesses lining 51st Avenue North, uh, north of Centennial Boulevard uh, that are creating significant daily uh, hazards, we think, to pedestrians uh, and automobile traffic. We would like to work with the metropolitan government in the solution of all the problems uh, in, the, in the neighborhood and, and appreciate, Mr. Chairman, the chance to say so today. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Right. Um, traffic Commission members, does anyone want to any further comments, questions, or do we, it sounds like we have somewhat of a directive from legal counsel that I guess we need to put into a motion. I mean, I don't think I can give you a directive. Um, one thing I would say, and Mr. Lee can perhaps expand upon, um, is that the current status quo is that there is a, um, a stay in place of the action of the commission. So the truck ban has not actually gone into practice yet. Um, so the, the status quo is currently that trucks are still using 51st. So question is, do we need to take any action? Do we need to request, I mean, the guidelines from the transportation officials are you, you need safety. So can this commission request a safety study? I mean, I think Public Works can entertain that request. I think they're receptive to it. Um, so, so yes, um, oh. I, their, their action or suggestion is to reconsider the prior action. Um, but they do certainly leave open the option of a safety study, and I think we could share the results of such a study with TDOT as well. Okay. Member Hager. Can we defer this and ask for that safety meeting before we vote on this, or how do we proceed? I, I guess I'm a little unclear as to whether, I think commissioner members here are unclear as to whether we have to vote to rescind or since nothing's been implemented, it's kind of the status quo. So if you ask for a, a safety study, is this is, is, does the transportation departments consider that this issue's been addressed and does that impact, I guess, the funding issues and others, so. I can't really give you a definitive answer on that. I can tell you that um, uh, I did respond to the general counsel at the TDOT office to let them know that we had this item on the agenda, that we received their correspondence, um, uh, and um, that my recommendation would be that you all do reconsider your action in light of their conclusions um, regarding the noncompliance with the federal regulations. Um, and he did respond to that and say that he would advise the Federal Highway Administration. Um, I also made it clear that um, I can't give you all a directive, that it is the commission's decision. Um, uh, so um, whether um, we have leeway to defer it and um, uh, uh, have the study done, I'm not quite sure how long such a study would take. Um, uh, you know, I, I can't say for sure, um, but the fact that the that lawsuit is stayed um, may help in that regard. I don't know if Mr. Lee would have any further thoughts on that as well. Uh, so question, then would, if, could the commission just say, well, let's leave the status quo and while we do a pending study, because the status quo is there's been no truck restrictions enforced. That's correct, but that's due to the action of the court, not the okay. action of the commission. Okay. Commission members, any? So, uh, let, me, let me just read this sentence from the commissioner's letter. <clears throat> In conclusion, accordingly, we believe the appropriate action at this time is to forward our analysis to Nashville and give them time, while litigation is pending, to reconsider the commission's action and explore some other possible resolution of the situation. Is 
is up to you. We do have, I would, I would, um, I do want to restate that federal funding is very important to this city and to, to the public work. So um, just think about that, please. Well, <clears throat> Chip, the state can override anything we do anyway, the way I understand it. Well, through the court system, yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think TDOT was trying to give us a little time to resolve this on our own rather than. Would there be anything that would preclude us from, if we rescinded the decision and voted upon it and rescinded the decision today in order to comply with federal law, is there anything that precludes us from doing the traffic safety study and then coming back bef with that traffic safety study in front of the board to repeat the process all over again, but with the safety survey? Um, I, I think we could, however, I normally bring my book with all our, our um, operating rules, and I did not today. Um, I know we have one that's we have We, a, we can, have a self-regulated six-month The six-month rule, rule is what I was thinking which of. Is, is their rule anyway, so they could probably. That's true, you can always, yeah, it, it's your rule that you've adopted, so you could, um, I guess, suspend it if, if you all agreed to do that um, uh, in a particular situation. Um, but, but yes, I, 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 ultimately I do believe that you could do what you're asking. Okay, Ms. Kirk, would you? Well, I mean, it does seem like we don't have much choice here. Uh, <laughs> But I would say, I mean, I, I do think the previous study didn't address pedestrian safety. That didn't seem to be the focus of the study. And so if we do, and that seems to be the concern certainly raised by the community. So I think if we could ask that that be the focus, um, particularly, you know, with all with the addition of the crosswalks and whether or not there's sufficient, you know, time for trucks to stop, um, then, I mean, that seems like the best, um, what you proposed, Lieutenant, would be the best I, case scenario. Would someone like to I'll make create a motion, a motion that we repeal the previous decision pending a safety study and okay all right so we have a first is there a second to that I'll, I'll second with the hope that we do this does return shortly after the safety study hopefully within several months so that we can reconsider and consider the um the full picture of the safety concerns right. expressed by the community. All right, so Jackie, if you could make sure the minutes reflect that there's some sense of timely, time, time urgency in this, please. Okay, all right, so we have a first and a second. Is uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 We'll do a hand vote. Reluctantly. <laughs> no. Okay, all right, any opposed? So the motion passes, so we'll do, we've rescinded our action, we'll do a safety study with a sense of urgency and come back and reconsider, okay? Thank you, council member. Thank okay. you. All right, thank you, commissioners. Okay, uh, the downtown partnership, amendment to contract with Metro Public Works regarding management of Howard Office Complex parking requested by the Nashville Downtown Partnership. Thank you for your patience while we work through some other items. Absolutely, thank you for your time today. I uh, wanted to talk to you just a little bit about uh, an amendment to the contract. We were approached uh, from the mayor's office and uh, some of the uh, businesses in the area. Uh, which is going to be third and Lindsley area. Uh, it's evolving, more businesses are coming in and what's really driving us is that we are losing some parking spaces that is causing concern. So it was thought that uh, the area uh, behind us, in particular the parking deck and the 127 space surface lot that the public uses during business hours uh, could be utilized during the evening hours, after business hours and on weekends to support number one, some of the special events in the area as well as uh, future business growth. So that is the amendment to the contract that we are seeking. Uh, and we also wanted to uh, request that we have the ability to charge up to $10. Uh, we needed to bring that before the committee as well. Uh, and I will take any questions on the item. Anybody has questions, please? Pull up, a, pull up, pull up an aerial of this parking here, Corby. Yeah. 
During the weekends, are people allowed to park out here in the open parking lot? Yeah, you, yeah, sometimes you got the gates open and sometimes you got them closed. It really just depends on what's going on. So during tax seasons, elections, that type of thing, uh, they are allowed. We would be required to work around those dates. Uh, we have developed a uh, parking website link that Metro departments can submit their requests for need for spaces. Uh, after hours and on weekends so that we are aware of it. We do not get first pecking order on the spaces. Uh, we will move out when necessary and also keep in our back of our mind what's going on. So it's really incumbent upon us to watch the calendar and make sure and we have The space. reason I ask that because a lot of times on the Titans games, sure. I know sometimes you'll have those gates locked and they'll parking's at a premium during the Titans game sometimes. Sure. And that's why I was asking that question. Sure. Yes, Ms. Kern. So would this be for the surface lot as well as the um, the garage or? Okay. It is. Okay. Okay. Um, and only at night or would it in weekends? Nights and weekends. Okay. Any other comments mm -hmm. from commissioners? Is there a motion? We have a first. Is there, we have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Your motion has been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item is requesting 100 complimentary parking spaces, Metro Courthouse Garage on April 14, 2018, requested by the Nashville Cherry Blossom Festival. According to the contract with the Nashville Downtown Partnership, any request for complimentary parking must be approved by this commission. This is something that we've done in years past. All right, is there a motion? We, we have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion's been approved. Next item, requesting to speak to the commission about requesting additional parking spaces for the horse-drawn carriages requested by Sugar Creek Carriage. Is Sugar Creek Carriage present? Okay. Please step forward, state your name and address. Turn your mic on, please. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kama Warren. Kama Warren, I'm with Sugar Creek Carriages. I'm an operator. My name's John Smith, me and my, there we go. My name's John Smith, me and my wife Brenda owns the company. Well, hello, my name is Kama Warren. I am an operator with Sugar Creek Carriages and I'm here to speak to you today about the parking issues with the carriages in downtown Nashville. But real quick, just to first a little bit about me because I don't know you. I've been in the carriage industry now for a little over 20 years and in the horse industry for 40. To include owning, showing, training, giving lessons, and driving. I've also worked in many different carriage industry markets to include California, Texas, and now Nashville. Right now in Nashville, we have parking space allotted for four carriages and we have 13 permits issued for carriages to work. I know from watching past YouTube videos and reading past minutes from the Transportation and Licensing Commission that the parking has been discussed many times with no resolve to the issues. Right now, there is no real ordinance as to where the carriages may go either to load or unload a fare when the allotted parking on North 2nd Street is full. We as an industry here in Nashville have emailed our director, Billy Fields, stating that the carriages, and he has replied, he stating that the carriages may load and unload, park and maintain our equines in the marked parking for carriages only. Remember, there is no ordinance stating this. It is his email, it is not law. We, with this, we come to several issues. If a carriage is not able to park in the said stand, the carriage with the equine must continue to walk around the city until we are able to fit in to one of the four parking slots. Remember again, we have 13 horses that can work at any given time. Our ordinance states that for every 50 minutes that an equine is working, they must rest for 10 minutes. Also, we are not able to attain a fare at this time, according to this email, both losing income for both our drivers and our industry. Remember also, your drivers are your doors to your city. We are not only people that give information about the city, we are your historians. Drivers are also not able to dismount the driver's box to use the restroom unless we are able to park in the designated areas 
and stands, and the equines are not able to obtain water. So we are asking this commission to give us the right to be able to stand our equines in any loading zone. And by meaning standing, the definition for standing of a vehicle is otherwise than temporary for the purpose of and while actually engaged in loading on or unloading merchandise or passengers. We're not asking to park in the loading zones. We're asking to stand so we can p pick up a fare and unload a fare. So that when we obtain these fares, we're keeping our carriages in business and we are out of the flow of traffic and not impeding the daily flow of people. We are not asking to stage in the loading zone, but just to be able to load and unload our fares in these spots. Remember, Uber, Lyft, the pedal taverns, pedicabs, golf carts, and taxis all stand their vehicles in these loading zones as well. We are also governed as a vehicle. We are a form of transportation, not just entertainment, as some people seem to think. We are also asking for two other areas to park our carriages so that one, they can rest, and two, so that our drivers can use the bathroom or eat. I have supplied pictures of these two areas to you all. The first spot would be on 2nd Street, just south of Broadway, next to Rock Bottom. This is where the tour buses park until about 6 p.m. After that time, it becomes a taxi stand that is not utilized by the taxis, but becomes a free parking to anyone that is downtown, per the pictures. This between uh, first and second. It's between first and second on second. Each of the commissioners has a copy, copy of this proposal before them that shows the locations that they're requesting. This location could fit at least three carriages and would be local to the main stand where our stand workers can get to the carriages to let the drivers off the driver's box so they can go to the bathroom and also water our equines and the horses can rest. We are asking the spot to be turned into a carriage stand after 6 p.m not to impede on the tour buses that are already staged at this location. The second spot would be on Broadway in front of Rock Bottom from 2nd Street going towards 1st Street. This area is not a very busy area for traffic and there's a pullout and is a safe place to locate an additional stand as well. It is also centrally located to the main stand, thus making it easy for our stand workers to attend to the drivers and horses as stated before. Also, we have another issue that has just arised. We have seen painted on the ground where our stand is at this time. NES is going to be digging up our stand. We will have nowhere to go at all. I have seen a lot of changes in the carriage industry and been through a lot of ordinance changes as well. I have worked through the big changes in San Antonio, Texas back in 2013 when the city opened up the, to the carriages where they originally had parking for five carriages next to the Alamo, making it so that the carriages could move freely through the city. The carriages were allowed to park now in any loading zone, not to impede traffic. By the city of San Antonio doing this, they relieved stress on the drivers and the companies. It boosted business at least 70% and to our customers 100%. Also remember, we are an impulse buy. People aren't coming to the city, they're coming to the bars and to shop. They see the carriages, they want to ride. We can tell them about the history of our beautiful city. By allowing us these three things here in Nashville, we can believe we can boost our business, lower the stress between the companies and better serve our clientele with, that are wanting our carriage rides, as well as protecting and maintaining our animals in a safe manner per our ordinance that, is, that are already in effect. One, one other thing too, the, our yard is approximately 30 minutes from the carriage stand. So if we had to go all the way back to the yard to water the horses or to give the drivers a restroom break, that's an hour. Thank you very much for coming and speak today. Uh, Chip, Diane, what? What we can do at next this step, time? Next step, sorry, please. What we can do at this time, we can look at the location on Second Avenue North and talk to NES to see what their plans are for that location. 
We will also meet with Billingfield Transportation Licensing Commission to see if the taxis are utilizing that space on second. Okay, that stand. the picture that you're showing is not where we're asking. That is an actual taxi stand across the street in front of Rock Bottom. You're at. It's on the other side. Other side of the street. There is no taxi stand. Okay, but what you're saying is modifying the trolley stand. Mm -hmm. The taxis are not sound? utilizing that at okay. all. Yeah, right there on the right-hand side, they're, they're not using that. But since it is signed as taxi stands and the commission to approve that action, we would have to meet with Billy Fields Transportation License Commission <coughs> to see if we can make that modification and then bring that back to this commission for that approval. Okay. We is, appreciate is that, that. Correct. They, the Mr. Fields Commission is the one responsible for declaring that a taxi stand or not. Is that, that is correct? correct. Okay. Well, Thank you. Well, well this, body, this body approves the stands as well. This body approved the location of the stand, okay. but it is recommended by the Transportation and License Commission to us. Then we bring it to our commission here for their approval. Okay. Mr. Fields did send me, send us to we you We sent you, to, yes, I have spoke in length with Mr. Fields. And for, to get this ordinance changed or the request, he said we had to come and speak to you folks today about this. All right. He has sent us here. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. Um, is there legal counsel, is there some kind of action we need to take or is it the case we can just ask staff to look at this and come back to us in a timely manner? Um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up my, I didn't have my Metro code on horse-drawn no. carriages with me today. Yes. Um, I'm trying to pull it up and unfortunately I'm not able to pull it like up on mine? my phone. I don't see any reason why you can't defer it. Yeah, okay, so I think we can just ask the staff based on this presentation. Just, just one to month, do give some, us a month. Yeah. Can we ask though at least please at this hearing you open the loading zones to us to load Temporary. and unload? We are not asking to park. We're not asking to stay there, dismount our boxes so we can pull in safely because <coughs> our equines are now having to walk. We're not able to work. That's not fair to us. It's not fair to our equines. We're losing, the city's losing money by not allowing us to be able to use, at least utilize the loading zones. We're in and out within three minutes I safely. I would think we would need to have some kind of notification to the public that we were considering that, wouldn't we? There's no ordinance as it is now. It's a loading zone. Loading and I would unloading need to zone. research that to okay. be able to confirm what All she's right. saying. Okay. Um. <coughs> so what, what we can do is, yeah, legal would need to review that. That's, yeah. we, we just aren't prepared to answer that today. And then we'll review these specific locations. But what I'm gonna suggest maybe that you get a temporary permit get with Diane and, and, and pick some specific locations. It might not be all loading zones until we get Metro Legal to review it. Okay, so we a, appreciate anything we get can get at this point. Get a couple of loading point. zones in your head, meet with Diane, and, and she can issue a temporary permit, maybe. That is correct, I do. That is correct. We do have the option of granting temporary permits. Okay, can I see you today, or when can I meet with you to get these permits? Because we need to do something we're coming into busy a busy week, we're in Valentine's week. Weekends are very hard, all 13 carriages are out. What we do is we ask for the carriage companies to submit a written request, and then I review the written request on behalf of the department, and then we grant your request based on what you're requesting. Okay. Okay. So we can turn that in tomorrow, right, Ms. Marshall? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. all right, go ahead, Mr. Brown. I, uh, I appreciate what y'all are doing. I own horses myself, and we used to ride in the Christmas parade, and they made it so hard on us that people quit, quit riding in the Christmas parade. And every parade that you see all over the country has got horses in it. Children love to see the horses. And with us having horses, even when we go downtown, the kids and the white Let's ride the carriage, you know, and we got one, but they want to ride through town. And I really think, as far as Nashville goes, what y'all do is just as important as the taxi cabs. 
And yes, I appreciate it, and I hope this can be worked out. Sir, it's also part of our historical heritage. Yes, sir. Here in Tennessee. Right. I was born and raised in this beautiful state, and I love it, but it is our heritage. Right. Yes, sir. So, it is. Chip, if we could try to have something on the agenda for next month relating to this issue, since these people took the time to come before us today, that would be great. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Does any, any other commissioners have any other comments, concerns? Please, if you all have questions, feel free to ask so we can answer them. If a lot of people are probably not horse people, they don't know our industry. It's a very specialized industry. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Thank you. No other items to discuss, officer? Uh, I make a motion, we adjourn. Second it. Second and adjourn. We are adjourned. Thank you, commissioners. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov. Thank you.